AI image editing models let you make changes to an image just by telling it what you want, like change a color of something, change the background, remove an object, add an object, and just about anything else you can think of. These are models like Flux Context and ChatGPT's latest GPT image model. There's a new kid on the block named Quinn Image Edit. It's by Alibaba, and we're going to take it for a spin. At the time I'm recording this, Quinn Image Edit is available on Replicate, Foul, Hugging Face, and through Quinn Chat. And it's an open source model, so if you've got the hardware and the skills, you can run it locally. I tried it on Quinn Chat, but after about five messages, it said I had exceeded my limit for the day. I don't know if it's because I don't have a Quinn Chat account, and I wasn't real interested in creating one. I imagine within a few days, maybe by the time you're seeing this, Quinn Image Edit will be an option in the Chat to Edit features in multiple platforms. For now, I'm using it on Replicate. Here on Replicate, it's under Featured Models, Quinn Image Edit. We're going to start with this storefront image of my fictional widget store. And for the prompt, I'm going to say clear out the clutter inside the display windows and replace with an orderly display of widgets. And sure enough, it cleared the clutter out of those windows and made a nice display of widgets. And it looks like it kept everything else the same and didn't change anything that I didn't want it to. So now let's edit this new image. I'll clear out the original, bring in the one we just edited, and let's tell it to paint the tan brick above the black storefront gray, keep the black storefront black. Well, that didn't quite work. It did paint the brick above the storefront gray, but it also changed a lot of the storefront to gray as well that should have stayed black. Let's try to run that one again. And that time it just painted the storefront and not the tan brick above. Let's try again. Nope. Let's try again. Hey, there we go. I don't know, third, fourth, fifth times the charm apparently. That's exactly what I wanted it to do. Paint this brick up here gray, but leave all the black storefront down here black. Grab that image. And now from that image with the gray second story, we'll say put an open sign on the door. All right, we've got an open sign on the front door. Looks like it's spelled right. And it looks like it kept everything else about the image the same. So we'll grab this one, bring it back in as our starting image. Now we're gonna try put a bench in front of the store to the left of the front door with two people sitting on it. All right, we got a bench with a couple of people. It's sort of sitting in the middle of the sidewalk, not exactly where I would have liked it to be. And the people are looking a little rough. Let's take a closer look at that image. Yeah, the people are really plasticky, morphed faces, not a lot of detail. They don't look so good. Also, the image that I started with originally was 3,920 pixels by 2128, and these edited images that it's generating are 1392 by 752. When I tried editing in Quinn Chat, the images it produced were of similar resolution, much smaller than what I provided. Quinn Chat gave me a message saying the image I provided was high resolution and it would be downscaled prior to editing. We'll go ahead and keep our plastic Morphe people and work from that image. The next thing I want to try is make it dusk and turn the lights on. Hey, our people look a lot better in this lighting. It did exactly what I wanted it to do. I wanted these three lights over the sign to be lit up, some kind of lighting in the display window. Looking pretty good, except for the people and the bench in the middle of the sidewalk. Let's switch up now to this guy and we're gonna try and change his shirt into a red hoodie. Yeah, that's a red hoodie and it doesn't look like it messed with anything else in the image. Now we're gonna try and change the view out this window, see if we can't get a city skyline visible there. That looks pretty good. We've got the city skyline view and it doesn't look like it changed anything else, not even the window around the view. Now let's try to swap an object. We'll see if we can get rid of this notebook here and put a laptop computer in its place. Yeah, the notebook's gone from the desk, laptop computer in its place. Now let's see if we can't get this guy turned more toward us facing the camera. So I'll say rotate the man's pose 90 degrees to face the camera directly. Eh, he might be turned a little bit more toward us, but not 90 degrees. Let's switch up that prompt a little bit and say rotate the man and his chair so his chest is squarely facing the camera. I don't know if that'll work, but we'll give it a shot. Well, again, he's turned a little bit toward us, but not 90 degrees and not with his chest squarely facing the camera. Let's try a style change. See if we can make this look like a 1990s cartoon. I think this one came out pretty good. It eliminated a few little details that I would expect when going to a cartoon style, like this little spot on the desk drawer isn't in the cartoon image. It simplified the stack of whatever's over here on the right side of the desk, but I think that's totally reasonable. It took some liberties with his beard. I'm okay with that. So I think it did a good job with this one. Time for something different. We're gonna start with this coffee mug and see if we can't change it from glossy white to matte black. The coffee mug looks really good. It did exactly what I asked in changing that to matte black. The only other thing I see is it looks like it smoothed out this wood tabletop surface compared to the base image that I provided and we didn't ask it to do that. 
Now it's not a huge change and it might be okay. So let's just keep going and see what we can do. I'm gonna try adding some text. I'm gonna have it put Bob in bold white letters on the side of the mug. Well, that's definitely Bob and it's definitely in bold white letters. Thinking about the way it changed the texture of this wood makes me wanna try that on purpose. So let's say change the wooden table surface to a smooth marble finish. Hey, that looks pretty good. Now let's see if it can recognize and remove the steam coming up from the coffee mug. And yeah, it looks like it did. Let's try to move this mug. We'll put it in a modern office and tell it to keep the mug in focus. Well, we're in a different environment. Could be a modern office. The mug is definitely in focus. So I guess we'd call that one a win. Now we're off to the park. We're gonna make some changes here. First, we're gonna try and get rid of the trash can and replace it with a planter of flowers. Well, by golly, the trash can is gone. We got a big old planter of colorful flowers there. I didn't ask it to get rid of the bike, but I guess maybe it needed to to put a big old planter there. Next, we're gonna try and get a cafe stand in the background with a sign that says coffee and snacks. Well, I asked for it along the path, not right in the path, and there doesn't appear to be anybody working in that cafe stand. Let's change up that prompt a little bit. Maybe we'll just take out along the path and we'll see if it decides to add it in a better spot. Nope, it's still right in the middle of the road. So let's try put it in the grass. Okay, that's not what I was looking for at all. This added a little patch of grass and put up a little sandwich board that says coffee and snacks. No cafe stand. And I wanted it like in the grass that was already there, not add a little patch of grass to stick a sign in. All right, I think we'll abandon that idea for now. Let's try changing the pathway surface to a cobblestone texture. All right, we're back on track now. Now we're gonna try putting a person on the bench with a laptop. Well, I got a person on the bench with a laptop, but they totally look illustrated or animated and not realistic. In fact, now that I look at it, I think the flowers in this planter look a little bit illustrated or painterly or something that's not like photorealistic. We'll keep going. There's one more thing I wanna try, which is changing it to nighttime and have the park lamps glowing and casting light on the path. It seems to have found the lights that were along the path and lit them up. I'm guessing maybe our illustrated guy in this scene must be sitting underneath one of those lamps. We just can't see it, it's out of the frame. I was kind of hoping it would pick up and have the laptop screen casting some light on him. But if there's a light above him, we wouldn't see that. Moving on to another image, we've got this gal on a rooftop. We're gonna try to change the text on this sign from do not eat the plants to welcome to the rooftop. Oh, so close. Welcome to the rooftop. Let me double check. Oh yeah, I spelled it right. Okay, so it missed a T in the rooftop. Let's try again. Oh, welcome to the rooftop. All right, will third time be the charm? Nope, welcome to the rooftop. I wonder if it's having trouble with the F and the T being next to each other. What if we capitalize this? Give that a shot. No, that didn't help. Welcome to the roof -ot. All right, how about welcome to the roof? Can you do that? Well, sort of. It kind of looks like welcome to the poof. One more time. All right, that'll work. Now we're gonna try a facial expression edit, see if we can get a big friendly smile. So we got a great smile there, but it made some other changes too. Her skin is looking really plasticky or rubbery and a different color, like too bright or something. Let's give that one a reroll. That's a little better. It's still got a bit of an illustration kind of vibe going on, not just in her face and her skin, but also in her shirt and jeans there. They're looking a bit less realistic too. Let's see if we can swap out this background with a snowy winter mountain landscape. So it did what I wanted with the background, but now our subject there is really starting to look like she was copied and pasted in, like clip art or something. Now she's out here in this cold weather in a t-shirt. Maybe that's what's throwing me off. So let's try saying the woman's wearing a winter coat and hat. Okay, that seems better. Here's a side-by-side -side of what our subject looked like when we started and what she looks like now. There's some difference there. I don't know if it's just the lighting and the color, but it also has made some changes to her hair. Now, of course, we added the big smile, which certainly changes things, but I'm not convinced we ended up with the same person we started with. Maybe it's just me. Let's switch gears here, full pun intended, and work on this car scene. First, we're gonna try and change it to a glossy black finish. All right, that's definitely glossy black. Now, it seems to have made a couple of other minor changes here. On the car, it looks like it got rid of a sensor off the front bumper and something over here on the side. It changed up a seam here in the rear and it got rid of a pillar in this hedge behind the car. So let's try to give this thing some red racing stripes. All right, not exactly what I had in mind and definitely specified from the hood to the trunk. I didn't say anything about putting anything down here, especially nonsensical text down here on the side. So let's try that a little different. We'll say add two red racing stripes on the hood and roof of the car. I think that one came out pretty good. Now we're gonna try and get a bigger spoiler and black alloy wheels while preserving the overall shape of the car. 
All right, we got black wheels and we got a big spoiler. Now we're gonna try and get rid of the house in the background and replace it with a big oak tree. All right, the house is gone and we have a tree, but things are starting to look a little bit more like an illustration than photo realistic. One last edit for this one, we're gonna try and change this into a vibrant neon cyberpunk style. Hey, that came out pretty cool. That gave us all kinds of glow and background lights that we asked for, very nice. But well, we experimented with changing colors and backgrounds and facial expressions and all kinds of stuff. What do you think? It seems like when we make changes to people or we try and add people in, it doesn't do well at the photorealistic style and wants to turn them into some kind of illustration or clay or plastic or I don't know what. I run into that problem with ChatGPT. Of course, ChatGPT or GPT image and one of the chat to edit editors also likes to turn everything yellow for some reason. I think for now, I'll stick with Flux Context. It seems to keep the photorealistic stuff realistic and it's pretty good about changing just what you ask it to. Of course, the downside with Flux Context is you lose a little bit of quality with each edit, so three to four edits in, things can start looking pretty rough. A lot of times you can fix that with upscaling, depending on the situation, because if the quality gets too rough and depending on the upscaler you're using, it could end up putting in details that mess up your consistency. But hey, it was fun checking out this Quen image edit thing. I hope you enjoyed your time here. Thanks for hanging out with me. I hope it was helpful or at least entertaining and I hope you'll come back and see me in another video.